السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وأهلا وسهلا بكم جميعا Welcome all of you and good evening for everyone in the Sultan for the brothers of Turkish and Kahal here for the brothers Urdu Bonsoir for the French some other language not my fault the brothers didn't teach me yet ذاك العادم في علا من أبدع الكون سوى سبحان الله وبحمد الله ولا إله يا أيها الناس إنا خلقناكم من ذكر وأنثى وجعلناكم شعوبا وقبائل لتعارفوا. يعني what I want to talk to you about is what is culture. That's all. You know parachutes. Mind, minds are like parachutes. They work best when they are open. The beauty of Islam in its morals. It's undisputed. If someone come and stand here and look at the nationalities that I'm looking at, even United Nations don't have that. The way that Islam deals with people is what's attracting so many people to Islam. And he's saying this is what Hollywood has been doing for the last hundred years. They repeat negative and false images of the Middle East and of Arabs and over 100 years of continually lying and lying and lying you lie until the people believe you very good very good more than interest the problem now is information comes from everywhere uh -huh. which is one we want them to search about this inform information is it correct or false we were called bots when my parents migrated and recently with the Cronulla rights um, Unfortunately, I'm not, I'm not demonizing all people, but I'm, I'm sure we, we are raised in a, in a culture of um, double standards, where we promote multiculturalism as a government policy, but we don't act that way. I'd like to introduce the first speaker who is known to all of us and really doesn't need any introduction and that is our beloved Sheikh Abu Ayman as we all know the Sheikh is probably the best person to begin this conference with in terms of his knowledge to start off with but also his experience in the Dawa he's been in Australia for more than 20 years He's lived, of course, amongst the Muslims in the Middle East. And he has been traveling a lot, visiting different Muslim countries and looking at how Muslims live in different places and in different parts of the globe. He has a very strong knowledge of Islamic history. It's one of his favorite topics. So who better to start off this topic of multiculturalism in Islam than Sheikh Abu Ayman? So I invite him, Zakallah Sheikh to address us. Assalamu alaikum. Inna alhamdulillah, na'hamaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'afiruhu wa na'udhu billahi min shuroori anfusina wa min sayyati a'malina man yahdi allah fala mudilla lah wa man yudlil fala hadiya lah wa ashadu an la ilaha illa allahu wahdahu la sharika lah wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh أما بعد، dear brothers and sisters، الله سبحانه وتعالى said in the Holy Quran، يا أيها الناس إن خلقناكم من ذكر وأنثى وجعلناكم شعوبا وقبائل لتعارفوا إن كرمكم عند الله أتقاكم. And this is the main or the heart of the topic when we talk about cultures and multicultures. Who we are, from where we come, as the Prophet ﷺ in so many different occasions emphasized on that, that you all come from Adam and Adam come from mud. And sometimes I add to the brothers 
When I say mud, I say stinky mud. Just to remember that you have uh, two matters in you. One is the clay, which is the stinky mud, and the second is the soul. And if you prefer to claim the race through the color or anything else, you have to remember that you come from the mud. Otherwise, you have to remember the other part of you, which is the soul, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give it to you to let you connect to him, to heavens all the time. Once upon a time, was a discussion about multiculturalism in Australia. And someone called it smashy potato multiculturalism, whatever. And they asked a Muslim spokesman, when we are talking about multiculturalism, you are Muslims, you have so many different cultures. He didn't know how to answer this question. So, the council and the advisors of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, when they sat together, they say, we have to address that issue. And today I'm standing here, just the Sheikhs, inshallah, they will hold all the talks about multiculturalism and how Islam was with it and how Muslims did it in the past and today and in the future. But my main issue today with you and what I want to talk to you about is what is culture. That's all. And I want to say to everyone who doesn't understand exactly what culture means because we have a deep understanding of culture and we have very shallow understanding of culture. And that journalist, when he asked the question or when he hit us back with the, so many cultures you have, which culture are we going to choose in Australia? If we want to use the cultures, the Muslims, mashallah, they come from so many different countries and they have so many different cultures. And I want to stop here and to say, my dear brothers and sisters, that is a wrong understanding, completely wrong understanding of our topic today. When we are talking about culture, we are not talking about what we call it in our fiqh books or even the dictionary al-a'raf wal-adat wal-taba'a the different customs the different habits the different way of dealing with matters that is not the culture that is as we call it adat taqalid folklore but the culture come deeply from the root of your belief so the really understanding of the culture you have to understand how the culture was built in the society so in Islam when we have the Islamic State from far west as far as the heart of Europe to the Far East as the border of China, we have one culture. We don't have so many different cultures. The culture we are talking about here is the way how you look at the things. 
For example, from our culture, as far as you go, wherever you go, even today, with the Muslims, so, ma so much yani, misunderstand their Islam altogether. But these bailers are still in their hearts, even when they don't practice it. The difference between halal and haram. This is part of the culture. Obeying your parents is a part of the culture. Respecting the elders is a part of the culture. Believing in the day of judgment is a part of the culture. So where the culture come from? This is where that journalist and the spokesman don't highlight the main issue of the culture. All the, the, all the Muslims, they have one culture in these matters. Of course, they have different habits. They, they have different customs. If you're talking about food, of course, you have different variety of foods. Some like curry, some the, like hot food, some like mild food, some like fish, sometimes meat. Oh, this, this, is, this is, has nothing to do with the culture. But the culture said to you that you can't eat haram food. So there is no Muslims they have in their manual food Pigs, for example. They don't eat bacons. Wherever you go, in any country you go, if they eat curry or they don't eat curry, if they eat hot food or don't eat, you don't find that in their food. This is a culture. We don't drink alcoholic drink. Again, Wherever you go, you don't find in any of our tables part of our drink is alcoholic drink. This is part of our culture. Our, our women, yes, they have different designs of clothes, but all of them, they wear clothes running with the code of Islam how they should dress. If they are, they are Asian or they are European or they are Australians, you see there is no difference in that. Yeah, maybe the different in the color. The Indians love so many different colors. And the European different colors. But this is, has nothing to do with the main issue. What is it? How to cover yourself in Islam. So we have the same topic. In Islam, as it is part of our culture, we don't have, for example, mixed sexes. Free practice of sex between the boys and the girls, except with the marriage. This is part of our culture. Wherever you go, you find the same culture we have. This is an issue, a very, very important issue to understand. So when we talk about the culture, we have to look after what built the culture, how the culture was built. So it wasn't come accidentally that all the Muslims, they have same code of clothes, dress, men's or women. There's no difference. Yeah, the difference in the design. And if you go back, even to the clothes we wearing, as they call it, Indian clothes, Pakistani clothes, Arabic clothes, whatever clothes, Turkish clothes, but in reality, you go back to it, you find it, it has a base of it in the Sunnah. All the Muslim wearing clothes, it is the Sunnah clothes. The Muslim used to wear it in Al Medina. But it happened that some Muslims adopt one type of it, like what we call it Pakistani clothes. This is what's known 
in the Prophet's time. As same as the full Qamis was known again, even before al Madin. But everyone wears it in a different way. But still they are following and adopting the code of clothing and the code of dress in Islam. So uh, as multiculturalism, what we are talking about, we are talking about multi-beliefs. This is what it is. Culture equal to a belief. Because the belief, al-Iman, what you believe in is the core of your culture. So when you are adopting a belief of Hindus, for example, or Christians, you have a different culture. So the Hindu has a different culture, 100 percent than the Christians. And the Christians have a different culture than the Jews. And the Jews have a different culture than the Muslims. And all of them, under the shade of Islam, they live together. Everyone has the freedom to adopt what he wants as long as he was practicing according to what the Sharia allow everyone to practice. So this is the main issue we are or I am addressing today. So when we are talking about the culture, my dear brothers, you have to understand and you have to tell everyone that yes, we might look different because we come from a different race. We have so many different colors. We have so many different way of eating but we don't eat except what the Sharia allow us to eat. We have so many different of way of wearing our clothes, but the clothes has to be according to the Sharia. The Muslim cannot wear whatever they want. They can't show their aura. They can't show their private parts because the Sharia doesn't allow that. Men or women, so this is the, shi the codes we adopt. And this, by the time, they call it a culture. Okay, I don't mind, whatever you call it. As long as we understand where this goes to and where this comes from. As they say, la mashahata fil istilah. There's no problem of getting a different code or a different name of the issue we are talking about. But the problem of making this issue, changing the outlook of what we are believing in. And this is make it a big difference. And this is divide one ummah to so many different ummah. And that is unacceptable to us. And we have to stand firm against all of these divisions. From the beginning, as the divisions of the human themselves. When we say, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to us, we all created from Adam. So in reality, we are chained to one source and come from one original material. There is so no difference. There is none of us better than others. Doesn't matter what color or what race you come from, in, in the end, 
you are coming from Adam. So we related to each other, and this is, and when you believe in that, as the Muslims believe strongly in the Prophet saying, Salawatullahi wa salamu we change everything we're looking at to the human. We don't say, ah, because they are white or because they are black, because they are this, because they are that, they are cursed. We don't say that. We believe we are all equal in the eyes of the Sharia. The difference is what you come out with. The difference is how much you practice, how much you are good with your deeds, how much good you with your belief, how much close you are to Allah, how much you are more appreciated by us. Then we go to another subject and the other subject and the others. So after all of that, we can see the value and we value the human with the right skills. But we have to understand all of these terms being thrown to us and link it to a Sharia. As we link everything and we're supposed to do that with everything to a Sharia. What a Sharia say about that? And what a Sharia value that? How we should deal with it? Then we do that, inshallah ta'ala. I hope I didn't take a lot of your time because I'm more, how you say it, waiting uh, impatiently to hear our guests, especially these beautiful brothers. They grown in this da'wah with us. When I see them, I see the fruit of our work. And I see that the future of Muslims here is more bright than the start of this da'wah 20 or 30 years ago. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us and make our time spent in his sake as a fruitful time. Inna huwa liyu dhalika wal qadiru alayhi. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.